There's a whole lot of books. Everywhere it's books and magazines and straight shelves. Oh, I can't cope with the untidy shelves. Why can't all the books be displayed in size order? It all looks uneven. It annoys me. Just saying. They want to watch me and see how I react, apparently. Awkward. <laughs> Firstly, I'm becoming acutely aware of how it feels to be a guinea pig. And secondly, they're putting far too much emphasis on me as a stereotype. I know. Look at me. Middle-aged, single man with no kids and no desire to visit the library. Somehow they found me. Like I was some kind of social experiment. I don't think there's even any science in what they're doing. This woman sat in front of me with a clipboard. What do I like to read? <laughs> I tried really hard not to say porn. <laughs> I don't read porn, by the way. That's weird. It was almost like, because I'm a single middle-aged man with no kids and out of the mix currently seeking employment, she expected me to say, I don't read. That would be a football-watching, beer-loving bloke who only works with men and does man stuff. Or, when she finds out I don't read, she'd ask if I had a shed, or a boat, or if I um, took part in a pelliar. Or if I went down the pub on a Saturday night to socialise with the other men who don't read and only do man stuff. And if I didn't do those, then I must be gay, because if I don't check any of those checkboxes, that must be it. According to her stereotype, that is. I read, I said to her. This had clearly never happened to her before, because her finger turned a little bit white as she held the pen that bit tighter. This is a big deal, why? I said. She didn't have an answer for that. She just bowed her head and tried to hide her excitement behind the clipboard because she'd just found a statistic that would maybe just turn the whole exercise on its head. and That would mean she didn't have to be quite so lazy with the report's conclusion. <sighs> I read. Of course I read. I learned at school. I write letters to mum. I can't it's old fashioned, but I like to do it. Once a week, it's part of my routine. Come in here on a Saturday afternoon at about two o'clock, grab a hot chocolate for the machine, and I settle down over here on the couches. I shut me in for a pretty start and I listen to echoes of hushed conversations. I open me in and watch. A feather wears twa bairns. He's teamed him here to get his wife piss at the supermarket. The feather and the bairns browse the shelves. The Baron's grabbing goodies that are free, ready as the price tag led an alternative that young parents can struggle with when inundated we shouts at, can I get this, hurled at them. The feather seems awkward, unsure of what to say to his Baron's as they run to their favourite corner and launch themselves into the books. He stands towering over the shorter furniture, watching their pretty faces light up and then fade as they decide that's no the book for them this time. He lowers himself down onto his hookers, bringing himself down for his towering position to be closer to the barons he wishes he had more time to be with. His youngest thing gains up to him with a book in hand and grabs his father's hand. Read me this one, Dad. He looks out and sees that his other bairn is sitting cross-legged, engrossed, nestled on a brightly coloured cushion with a brightly coloured story. He nods before standing to his height, and lets his piri bear and drag him to a piri chair. He sits on the ground aside the piri chair as his bear and manoeuvres the chair to be right next to him and eagerly waits for his story to start. Are we no right this one afore? A big shack of the heed is a piri bit of a fib, but the feather smiles before letting the book settle in his hands. I wonder how it begins. His bearing beams as he opens the first page and reads the first words 
with a soft, hushed voice that carries to me. I can't hear the words exactly, but I'm fairly certain it's a story. They both came really well, as the book on the lap is nearly redundant. Pages are turned after the words on the next page are spoken. What do I read? I could almost hear salivating at the prospect of what will come out of my mouth. Would it be the sports pages of the newspaper? Or comic books or westerns? Would it be thrillers or historical masterpieces? Or something more Game of Thrones-esque? Would it be the newsfeed of my social media? Would it be car manuals or hobby books? Computer books, that must be it. I must be a nerd and read computer books if I read nothing else. <laughs> Everything and anything. She held the pen away from the page when I said that. What? Everything and anything. Well, does that make me weird? Does that make me some kind of blip on the social landscape of typical males? No. Just makes me honest. I decided the time had come. What gets me about this? Sorry, what was your name again? Jackie, she says. Right, well, what gets me about this, Jackie? Is he judging the book by its cover? Oh, that's deep, she says. <laughs> now, if a woman had said that to you, you wouldn't blink. But right now, you look like you've got an unfortunate twitch, Jackie. Why can't I read everything and anything? I even attempted a Mills and Boo once. It was my mum's. I wanted to see why she read them all the time. Turns out it was pure romantic smutty mush. Not my thing. But I read it. And another thing. She gulped. Clearly this had never happened in their surveys before, but I was on a roll. Book groups. Book groups? Book groups. You like book groups? No. I hate book groups. The face turned white. I might as well have said I eat babies. <laughs> What's wrong with book groups? Book groups are all about women sitting around a table telling you how much they love the book. Except there's one person sitting in the corner who pops up and says, I hated it. And suddenly, they're all questioning their already declared love of the book. Why do they hate it? What was it that didn't work for them? What was the writer trying to say that they couldn't get? Do they not love the book? Do they not understand what the writer was trying to do? Can they not appreciate the wonder of the craft of the writer who's just so goddamn wonderful and we all can't wait for the next book? Whoop, whoop, whoop. Try being me in the middle of that. I've read things that are awful. I've read books that are amazing. I've even done that thing where I've read a book that was so good it's made me want to pick up another random book, start at page one, just to see where it gets me. That's what I want. That's why I read. To get away from me. I, I like me, but I like to get away from me. There's lots of ways of doing that, and reading's mine. She takes a sip of water. She almost looks fearful because she's building up to the final question on her notepad. Do you use the library? No. I don't need to, I've got my own books at home. All displayed in size and then alphabetical. I've got a Kindle. I read that too. What will make you use the library? I don't have an answer for that one. I can see a smile because she almost th thinks I've got tripped up. Maybe. Just maybe. If you didn't make such a big thing about me never being in the library, you might do a better job of actually getting me in the library. And with that, I said goodbye. Goodbye. I smile to myself as I look in my bag for a pen. Nothing extravagant. Just some envelopes we match and paper that I got a few months back. I hunt to the bottom of my bag where my pen inevitably lurks. <sighs> Tag a mouthful of hot chocolate before writing the words, Dear Mom. This week's letter is underway. I just tell her my news, what's been happening for the last time I wrote to her. It started when I was away at uni. I was so homesick I couldn't speak on the phone. Every time I tried to phone, I would greet. And then one day, I got a letter for her. 
Her week it was a war, she would call it. A bit like you thing that they do on Radio Shetland. <laughs> She's rat it in the library so that she could multitask, get a good dose of people watching, and get her books out for the week. She would include some of her observations in her letters. Nine times out of ten, she would just be lamenting about folk that made too much noise. <laughs> she was a bit old-fashioned like that, ma'am. Anyway, we started writing this weekly newsletters. I bade away after uni. I got one to city life, and I wanted to see mayor of the world. Shetland's like a bubble, and once you get out of it, you realise there's mere to it. So I saved up and travelled to Australia. I was there for the Brooks a six month. The letters, after two or three weeks of catch-up, continued, but were a pity bit later as usual. It I felt like I was able to tell her a better version of my life. Like I didn't tell her about the night I got steaming drunk and lost my accommodation keys. <laughs> Instead, I tell her I did a fun night out. She would write and tell me about the weather and the local news and moan about the council. She would say about the tall man she saw every time she was in the library. He was head in either bear and looked a boy this time. <laughs> she would tell me about the neighbour's cat that kept shitting in their gear team <laughs> and who she was that blight that I was off seeing the world. She'd never done that, seeing the world. Tell me about what you've seen in the next letter, she would say. She would tell me that she was fed up of working but that you had to pay the bills. And she was looking forward to hearing me home for Christmas. And would I be biding up for up Elia this year? I told her I wasn't sure, but I would try. Okay, I wasn't sure, for I was starting to think it was maybe time to come home for good. Maybe it was time for that. The strange thing about Shetland, it pulls you back. And once you let that feeling into your heart, then you can it's time. So I wrote to her, telling her my plans, and I got a letter back two weeks later. She was that excited and she couldn't wait. She was gone into full-blown mom mode. She was planning Christmas dinner and thought that we would go and be seen. She would tell me about jobs being advertised that I could go and look into, but that was no hurry to find work. We had to have me and her time first. And a tear slid down my cheek as I can't. I needed to see her. For Shetland is one thing, but your mom, well, your mom's home, isn't she? She's the one you come home to. Now, that's this week's letter finished. We are my news for mom. I still hate to tell her my news, even though I lost her two years ago. It'll maybe pass with time, but. For now, I still hate to tell her what I'm seeing, what I'm being up to. I see it, the feather's gotten as bare and sorted with books. He glances at me as he heads by and nods as he heads to the issue desk. They'll be back next week. And so will I, to write a letter to my mum with my news for the week.